Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to New Zor Education. Um, I would like to talk today about, um, I think it's quite fascinating uh, issue. Well, eventually this is something which led people to creating computers. Well, and some other electronic uh, toys like electronic watch and whatever. Computers, that's the most important part of it. So, um, computers do arithmetic and logic operations and basically I was personally was very much interested in how exactly it, it, it's done in um, electronics because obviously this electronics is used to implement all this so all these miracles which we are see implemented in contemporary computers they have some base foundation how it's all done and it's all done based on some simple rules rules of mathematics and logic which are implemented in electronics so this and next few lectures will be dedicated to implementation of basic logical operations uh, using electronics primarily like diodes now um, if these are done and implemented then everything else all these complicated calculations etc they're all done based on certain basic electronics which I'm going to address very briefly um, very sketchy uh, in this and subsequent lectures so these uh, lectures will be dedicated to using electronics to implement logic Okay, this lecture is part of the course called Physics for Teens. It's uh, uh, presented on unizor.com website, the lectures and uh, notes for each lecture. There is basically like a textbook. Each lecture has a video part and the textbook part. There are some problems in certain cases. Uh, there are exams. I do suggest you to use this website. It's uh, completely free. There are no financial uh, strings attached. There are no advertisement. And also there is a prerequisite course called Mass for Teens on the same website. And basically what I, what, what I will be talking about today is related to mathematical logic. So I will start with certain like repetition maybe of uh, some mathematical logic and its operations and gradually will lead to the next lectures which will go to details of implementation uh, of this logic in electronics. So, okay, so let's do it. First of all, mathematical logic deals with basically two concepts, true and false. And um, they are supposed to be somehow implemented in electronics. Now, there is no like objective law which tells us how to implement it, people have decided, basically, it's a decision made by certain people who were in the, fir who were in the beginning of all this electronics revolution, they have decided that if at certain point in electronic schema there is a positive potential, then this represents true. And if it's a zero potential relative to the ground, of course, I mean, so it's basically the same as ground, then it's equivalent to false. This is a, just an agreement among people. Now, usually they put even a concrete value for positive, like 5 volts, for instance. So, so if it's a positive 5 volts, then it represents uh, true in logic, in mathematical logic. And if its potential is zero volts, that's the that's the false. Again, this is an agreement among people, and everything is built on this particular agreement. I mean, you can always think about like printer, which prints either zero or one, depending on whether on some input contact of this printer is positive uh, potential or zero. Well, obviously we can do something 
the mechanical even, so electronics which will go into mechanical parts when something is moving and prints number one in case the positive potential is on some contact and if the positive if the um, potential is zero it, it prints zero we can always think about this so this is an agreement now um, let me just remind you very briefly about logical operations which mathematical logic and obviously computers inherited it from mathematics uh, what kind of operations exist but before that let me just tell you how it can be represented in real life in real schema just consider the following um, let's say you have at this point you have ground and on this point you have battery okay now if you will put some kind of a, a resistor in between this is positive let's say this is 5 volts this is connected to ground so this is 0 volts and there is a flow of electrons well this is positive so flow of electrons from ground through this resistor to this uh, positive uh, contact on, uh, on the battery but these are permanent voltages well, depending on obviously on the resisting resistance of this resistor, we can definitely say that there is certain um, uh, current going, electrons going this way. The current, by definition, goes against the electrons, so it goes this way. So, and this represents true, and this represents false. At this particular contact and this particular contact we have representation of true and false okay now let's talk about operations well let me just remind you something which you uh, should know from any course which contains mathematical logic what exactly we are doing with these two uh, concepts uh, true and false well there are operations so these are mathematical objects and operation on mathematical objects leads to other mathematical objects. Now there are unary and there are binary operations. Now let's start with binary operations. Well, disjunction. Which um, there are different symbols in mathematical logic. U, uh, sometimes uh, it's a U letter. Um, in programming, it's a vertical bar. Sometimes it's two vertical bars, but let, let's just not uh, confuse ourselves. One vertical bar. Uh, sometimes it's even plus, which I personally don't like because it kind of looks like um, addition in mathematics. So we're not going to use this one. We'll probably use this as the most frequently used in computer science. Now, what is this junction? This junction is operation on two uh, logical values, true or false, delivering the output. So, what do we have on input? And what do we have on output? Well, we can have true or true. Oh, by the way, it's or verbally we're talking about this junction which is a very long word as or logical or so true or true the output is by definition true true or false by definition output is true and uh, false or true gives us true and false or false gives us false um, it's actually reasonable considering this or meaning of the disjunction is or so either or is true yes in this case both are true in this case one of them is true or one of them is true but if none of them is true then the result is false so if one of those is true the result is true and that makes sense so this is disjunction now conjunction That's logical end. 
and we will represent it as an M percent. <coughs> well, in this case, now this is end, which means the result will be true only if both are true. And one true and another is true. So this will be like true and true results true, true and false results false, because again this is end, so only if both of them, this and this is true, the result, result will be true. And this is false in all our other cases. And the third logical operation which we will um, talk about, it's called exclusive or. Exclusive or. Or X or. And the usual symbol is plus in a circle. And the, um, the operation X or, sometimes it's also called um, addition by modular 2. So, um, because truth is really sometimes represented as 1 and false is represented as 0. Well, again, positive and 0 and uh, neutral. So, uh, if you will use binary logic, uh, which is called exclusive, or it, uh, it, it looks exactly like addition by modula 2. So, what we have here is true uh, and, well, not x or true, gives us false. That's what's very important. This 1 and 1 is 2, but by modulo 2, that's 0, right? Um, now, true and false would be like 1 and 0. That would be 1, which is true. Um, false and true, same thing, true. It's 0 plus 1 is 1, and false plus false would be false. 0 plus 0 is 0. So this is called exclusive or, or addition by modular uh, 2. Um, you see, addition by modular 2. This is already some reminds the arithmetic of the logic. If I will be able to implement these operations in electronics, it means that I will be able to execute logical operations. Arithmetic operations also will have, will have it, its own implementation. But in many cases, we do need logical or arithmetic operation, and that's what computers do. Whatever the sophistication we are seeing right now in computers, it's all based on elementary logic inside. Okay, now these are binary operations. Now, there is one unary operation. Unary means there is only one argument, and it gives me the result. It's called negation, not negation. And usually the symbol is something like this. And if true, not true, that's false, and not false is true. This is kind of obvious. We're just reversing the signal. If it was zero, we're making it positive. If it's positive, we're making it zero. So all this is supposed to be implemented somehow in, 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 in electronic schema. And electronic schema is supposed to deliver the result. Electronic schema, which implements, let's say, this junction, is supposed to give this result for corresponding uh, input signals. So no matter what kind of four different variations exist on the input, we will have corresponding with these results on the output. Basically, that's all I wanted to talk about today, because the real implementation will be in the next lecture. For instance, I will have a lecture about how to implement this junction, and we will talk about the details. Today, I would like just to give you a taste of it. Um, I will draw a schema which, on a very elementary level, without any details, gives you implementation of this junction. I just want you to consider the following schema. 
so you have contact A which is connected to um, anode of a diode this is diode at contact B which is also connected to this then we will have some kind of resistor to the ground and this is the contact C my statement is that this very simple schema on a primitive level implements this junction or let's just think about it remember what diode is this is anode and this is cathode cathode is heated and if it has certain amount of electrons there is an electronic cloud uh, how is it called? thermionic emission, right? and these electrons on the cathode are attracted by positive uh, anode and then basically there is a flow of electrons from cathode to anode one way not another way because only this part is heated okay so let's just consider different combination of signals A and B which I claim to be like input signals and, w and see what happens at point C well this is ground so if these are if one of these is positive one of these so one of them is positive and this is uh, zero uh, as a ground or this is ground and this is uh, positive or both are positive in any case the flow of electrons from the ground will go either this way or that way so if, if, if this cathode is heated and this is positive now since we are connected to the ground uh, and uh, basically we have unlimited supply of electrons going through the resistor we will have certain electrons here which will be uh, in this electronic uh, electrons cloud and it will be attracted to positive signal and there will be a flow since there is a flow of electrons here this is neutral always this is resistor and there is a flow this will be positive C would be positive, right? so if this one is positive then there is a flow here and C will be positive if this is ground and this is positive then the flow of electrons will be here this way electrons and since electrons are moving here there will be uh, uh, deficiency of electrons so it's positive so if either of these is positive then we will have C as a positive so if A uh, B C if A is positive and B is 0 C would be positive if A is 0 B positive, this will be positive. If both of them will be positive, C will be positive. And only in case when both of them will be uh, uh, on a zero potential, there is no attraction of the electrons. There is no flow of electrons. And if there is no flow, this will be C, C will be zero as well, which corresponds exactly if true is plus and false is minus. It corresponds exactly the picture of uh, disjunction. So if this is disjunction that's exactly what's implemented. We will talk about this again in the next lecture because I do, I, 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 I do want to dedicate one small lecture per operations and talk about the schema. Now this is a very primitive schema the real ones are a little bit more complex but in any case I just wanted to give you a taste how exactly mathematical logic can be implemented 
in electronics, in this case using diodes. Well, I basically that's it. I, I, I would like you to read the notes for this lecture on unizor.com. So you go to um, Physics for Teens course, it's electromagnetism, and uh, in the electronics part you will see this and all other lectures. That's it for today. Thank you very much and good luck.